Good morning, good afternoon. This is Raquel Redmond from Brava Art Press presenting a different video this time. This is a video about uh, using recyclable materials and also a, a bit about what to do with them and where to get them. It's about ideas, all these things that you can do uh, by things that come from home or you can find them in the kitchen or in centers. Um, nearly any big city these days have a recyclable center. Some of them are called reverse garbage. For teachers and parents uh, who work with uh, early childhood students and primary school students, even for those people who work in child cares, uh, there are a lot of ideas. This, um, uh, what I'm going to show you, it connects with the, uh, all the different projects that we have in our website and in our v um, YouTube channel. There are things, for instance, that you can do for with young children like this puppet made with uh, a milk carton and bits and pieces, found bits and pieces. There is another puppet here that it has been also uh, done with found things, old stockings and old curtains, and it's sitting on a plastic bottle. <coughs> Easy to find. There is also here, um, connected with the pop art um, project, it's an ice cream made with all recyclable bits. Uh, a construction um, project made also with recyclable bits, bits of cardboard, bits of uh, timber. And on the three dimension, on the two dimension, sorry, we have collage that uh, people can make. Another kind of collage there. We can use old maps. We can also use all kinds of bits and pieces like this here, um, cardboard, um, some plastic bits and paper to do a canvas collage. There are also other projects that you can do with recyclable materials like this um, is a piece of foam that came from a supermarket tray to do uh, a printmaking project that is also on the website and this is simply uh, cardboard to use um, in the printmaking, car printing project. Another one involving card, just card and shapes. And very easy to do. We have uh, different groups of recyclables, like we have textiles, we have paper, we have um, bits and pieces from computers, we have things from nature that we can use to draw. Uh, we have um, all kinds of things that we, ha we have bottles to display, we have um, cartons to make puppets. So we will uh, start with um, textiles involving um, something like this, a puppet. So it's good to have uh, everything display on the center of the table uh, with bits of wool, with bits of um, um, felt. Now, by the way, the felt with young children, I would never give them a piece of felt like that because they will cut a little shape right in the middle. So it's better to give them a small piece like that to cut a small shape. And for bigger shapes, just to cut a square about that big. Uh, for hair, we have all kinds of uh, possibilities. We have uh, uh, wool, ribbon, and uh, we have uh, even that, even that could be really good for, for hair. That comes from the supermarket. And also uh, we have all stockings for uh, a head. Here is the green face puppet with that made with the big um, green stocking. And these bits here come from packaging. So these are very, that's like a foam for packaging. So, and a bit of, um, felt and paper. We use we used to paper just like that. Tear the paper and glue. This is very nice for very young children because they, they can tear the paper, they can glue and make a puppet. Continuing on with the idea of textiles, um, all curtains, fantastic for print making to print patterns or for decorations on puppets. All calico it, from op shops are really good places to find things. All curtains, 
for the body of the puppet. So you don't need to spend a lot of money to make these kind of projects in the classroom. The op shop, as I said, is excellent. We find dollies, wool, old stockings, buttons, everything that you uh, possible need for a nice puppet project. In op shop, you also will find things like uh, you are going to need to clean up, like old t-shirts and to cut up for rags, like that, about that, not so big, about that size. And you will find also men's t-shirt for young children to wear over the uniforms to protect the uniforms. Short sleeves are perfect. And also uh, you will find men's shirts like this, like that, but you have to cut the sleeves. I have seen so many children struggling with long sleeves, so it's better to cut the sleeves and make it comfortable for the child to wear. Also, remember these things can come from home. If you write up a small list of what you need, you need the paint shirts for, to protect the uniforms, the t-shirts to cut up for rags. Everybody probably will have a bit of wool at home, some ribbons, uh, some tools. There's always bits and pieces that will come from home, but you have to be very specific. I have walked into classrooms with absolutely thousands of egg cartons. You don't need so many egg cartons or so many t-shirts. So it is important to be specific. How many shirts do you need? How many pieces of ribbon? Or, or send one child or three or five ch children to collect the textiles. Uh, another group to collect paper. Another group to collect um, bits and pieces like packaging people uh, pieces, uh, uh, cardboard and things like that. So you have to control otherwise your your classroom or your home will be absolutely full of different things that you will w use once. We will talk about containers now. There are all kinds of containers, plastic containers in general, that can come from home. Every time somebody goes to the supermarket and buys fruit or some vegetables or meat or chicken, they come in different containers. So it's great to wash them and keep a few and send them to school if you are a parent. And if you are a teacher, it will be nice to ask parents to send some containers. We have here these containers. They are takeaway containers. They are perfect for keeping different things like um, bits and pieces, like buttons and lids, small bits like that, bits of sponge, paddle pop sticks, and you can just have a, a small starch in at the corner of the client's room or, or at home and it won't be um, you will always know where things are the same containers can be used for um, to contain paint excellent to put in the middle of the uh, tables when the children uh, do the uh, the painting uh, projects uh, you have to group as we have discussed in other videos that you have to group the the um, desks and cover them with newspaper so this is perfect and always remember f for these um, containers, because they are low, always use short paint brushes, always a short paint brush like that. There are other kind of um, takeaway containers. There are these little round ones with lids, and these ones and these ones keep paint fresh for months. But if you don't have access to those, there's also the ice cube tray. It also keeps paint will keep the paint fresh if you cover that with a plastic wrap. There's also these trays. These are um, wonderful trays to display things because when you have a, a project, a drawing project or a painting project or a construction project involving bits and pieces, it's the best way is just to put the bits and pieces on these trays, put them on the center of the, the group so people can share, the students can share like that. So they are perfect. These uh, white trays are also very good for uh, foam printing. Uh, you don't have to spend money going to an art shop in this case if you don't have the, the enough budget. You can just cut them. There is a project on the, in a video using, um, showing how to use these trays for printmaking. 
These are a larger version that have been used and reused many times. The larger version of the white trays come from uh, fish shops and they are perfect to uh, do printmaking, also a uh, part of our projects, but also they are good if you have a gluing project where the child will make a mess or there's water or there's anything else that is going to be messy. If you can collect 25 or enough for your group in the classroom and give every child one tray, you at the end of the um, art lesson, you won't have any mess. Trays are also good for um, to put things like ink out in the middle of the group. Inks are a bit tricky because they are quite runny. But if you use a tray and keep it there, the students can actually use the paintbrush with a c to paint the color and then return the paintbrush to the same color. Um, probably in a group of 25, you will need two paintbrushes, short paintbrushes per color. Also, there is, this is a piece of bamboo, like that, that uh, also I found in a garden shop. And it's a good way to make a pen, a bamboo pen for ink, pen and ink drawings. Oh, there's also a video on that, uh, the use, how to use, how to make pen and ink drawings. There's also these ones, they are food containers. This is all for all the students to make some construction. There is um, a construction video coming up and it shows a building made with that kind of um, containers uh, involved cutting and flattening the container. So it's only for students that can manage um, scissors and this kind of materials without cutting <laughs> their fingers. There's also um, here a um, wire from, uh, I think it's called florist wire, also very good for joining things, for, to create all kinds of things. Florist wire is fabulous. And we have here another couple of things coming from the kitchen, tins. Uh, if, if I use tins many times to contain water, if you don't ha have plastic containers or to display things like that in the middle of the classroom. So you don't need to go and buy a plastic container spe specifically to, to uh, display your paintbrushes or to provide the students with, um, with water. A, a bottle, a cata bottle like this is very also very good to create a funnel. I don't have a funnel, so I, I always cut a bottle and to if you have to uh, put the ink back in the main bottle. They are perfect. And we have things like a sponge, a sponge that um, also comes from um, some pillows are made of a sponge, an old pillow, or some bed have this kind of a sponge uh, under the underneath. And it's, it will come, parents will provide teachers with uh, bits of a sponge. Um, also, an old towel is very important to have in the classroom. A couple of towels, actually, if you are working with more than 10 students, to um, wash your hands and then dry your hands. A bucket is also important to have in the classroom. So there are all kinds of things that, as I said before, will come from home or you will buy at op shops or recyclable centers. Now I'd like to <coughs> talk about paper. Paper can be very expensive or very cheap and easy to find. Uh, I think it's, um, uh, if we use our imagination, we can do a lot of things with paper, and paper can come, as I said before, from home or from a printer. If you go to a printer, print, a printer will give you all bits of um, paper. Now, I got here some recycled paper that we have used in one of the videos for um, a collage project. So. Um, the school administration always will have um, discarded paper to provide you for your projects. Uh, if you can buy um, cartridge paper, is the best, and A3 is the best size for the classroom because it's really um, the size of a small desk for primary school children. 
Uh, you could also use craft paper. It's a bit more expensive uh, because it's heavy. Um, but it's not necessary. But if you have access to craft paper, it will be fantastic. This is Manila folder paper or card. Perfect for card printing, part of the, our projects. And we have here some other papers. This is paper um, that has been uh, painted, stained for a painting project. More Manila. Um, paper bags are very good. Uh, they can come from home to keep bits and pieces. Because when you do a project like a puppet or you do a project involving uh, bits of paper or bits and pieces of this and that, uh, you have normally uh, 45 minutes, an hour and a half for one session. There are projects that go beyond one session. They take up to three sessions. So at the end of one session, uh, use the bag with the name on. Uh, one bag per student to put all the bits and pieces. So when they go back to the second session to their, their projects, they will find everything there. Uh, you can also use uh, plastic sleeves like this with a name. This is uh, an A3 plastic sleeve. It's really good uh, because you can see what is inside to start with. It's good to keep bits and pieces, but also it's good to keep children's work. If you work on an A3 size or A4, uh, you can keep the work here for uh, the term, until the end of the term, and then assess the children's uh, work. The, the, uh, under their understanding and the way they use um, art materials and the way they develop ideas. Uh, it's a very good thing to have. Each child should have a plastic bag like this. It's a, it's a sleeve with the name in order to be able for you to see the progress during the term and to be able to assess. Uh, I have also used um, this as a magazine page that has been tinted with uh, um, a neutral color to do, it could be for drawing or for painting. A, another a magazine, this is the magazine uh, cover. A, this paper will curl up, so you have to make sure that you put weight on the top to make them flat. Uh, this is a photocopy paper or um, a Xerox paper just um, prepared for drawing. And also, this is newsprint paper or butcher's paper, also print, um, painted. Uh, when you paint the paper, it, the paper will get stronger when you paint. So it's a good for painting and drawing. And newspaper, uh, newspaper to cover the desks. But also, you can paint the newspaper. You can stain, uh, underpaint the newspaper, and do a painting or uh, prints with newspaper. So. There is a possibility for many, many budgets in um, our program. Here I have a different kind of recyclable materials. These materials are uh, from nature, but also are things that we discard. So we have had this amazing conversation with the children about things that fall naturally and things that fall because men discards them. So uh, I have here a group of things from nature and some discarded other bits. Uh, they're wonderful um, things to, th uh, to think about and to draw. So we have here uh, a fish bone. Don't try to give children fresh fish to draw because they hate it. I tried and they just couldn't, it, it was just Im impossible. But dry fish bones, they will love that. They're wonderful, they have repetitions, they're wonderful uh, shapes. Uh, beautiful shells to draw, they love shells. But also we have beautiful dry things that I found on the ground. Or sometimes we used to go on a, w on a walk in the garden to find our treasures. So we, have, we found, in a, in a walk, we found this beautiful moth, some beautiful uh, seed pods, uh, a black cicada, 
uh, we will have a still photograph of this so you can see properly. All kinds of dry insects we found in another walk a beautiful seed pod that uh, we did beautiful drawings out of this seed pod and another kind of seed pod here we found some sticks and some very interesting um, bits of pine I think it is um, this is the uh, a fruit of the palm tree that uh, lives by the ocean so all kinds of uh, things that fall naturally but also there are things that we discard like computer bits like that perfect for drawing and to imagine different things by looking at them children love to draw from computer parts but also there are other things like um, paper clips, uh, there are uh, bread clips, all kinds of things that we can think about um, that men discards that we could use to different projects. So this is our presentation for recyclable materials. There is also uh, a list in our teachers um, resources page on the website www.bravaartpress.com where you can find the list and that list uh, is in a PDF uh, form so you can send that home and tick whichever you are after or, or go with the list and find somewhere in the um, recyclable center what they have. Uh, all of these recyclable materials are part of our program. We have used um, seed pots to draw and uh, computer parts to draw textiles to make puppets, sponges to apply paint, so all kinds of different things. And by the way, the little bits and pieces go, when you finish with them, go to the tre treasure box. I always have a couple, of three, two or three treasure box boxes, and every now and then I take my treasure boxes out for the children to discover and to draw. So this is the treasure box here. We, we can put some, some pebbles and a shells, some of the sticks, anything to go there. But I have another treasure box, not in camera. My other treasure box has part of the skeleton of a snake, a dried toad, and believe me, children love to draw from them. So this has been our video on um, recyclable materials, how to use them, uh, how, it, how to, where to find them, and uh, what to, to uh, ask for from home, which is very important because a lot of people, a lot of things can come from home to uh, increase your um, bank of uh, different bits and pieces that you need for your art lessons. If you need more information, go to our website, www.bravaartpress, and find uh, on the teacher's resources page a uh, list of these recyclable materials, and watch our videos with the projects. All the projects are there. Thank you very much. See you next time. <laughs>